Ebenezer family and friends. It is so good to just be connected one more time together. I also want to welcome our visitors. We thank you so much for just connecting with us. And if you desire to get more information about Ebenezer, please, please, you can go to our website at ebcnc.com uh, to get all the information that um, we can all grow together. That's my desire, that the body of Christ grow together. Uh, we thank you for uh, using the apps that we have. Um, Lord has done so many wonderful things. We've got a lot that's going on at uh, ebcnc.com in our church uh, Mondays Tuesdays Wednesdays we're going through the book of Luke and on Thursdays we added an in-person Bible study at six o'clock where we're going through the book of first John so we thank you so much for your immense prayers and of course our services that uh, go on uh, on Sundays are 845 in person and our uh, 10 o'clock online and our 1045 in person God is wonderful I just want to thank you for your giving um, I, I say this often, but I truly, I thank you for purposing in your heart to give. God loves a cheerful giver, and we've always held that because uh, God has done so much. Even as gas prices are going up and food is going up, there's so many stresses in our society. Uh, can anybody say you've been blessed? Yeah, you can put in the chat. I am blessed. Amen. We have. God has taken care of us. He has been our provider. And I encourage you, continue to seek his face and just purpose in your heart what he would have you to give. Also, I just want to let you know, your, your giving is impacting in, in so many ways. And I don't get to tell you as often as I would like, but... The other day, uh, we were uh, doing Feed the Hungry uh, ministry. Actually, uh, Mother Ratcliffe, she's over that. And it was Father's Day. I wasn't out there, and many couldn't get there, but there was a dedicated group to go out there on Father's Day. And while they were out there feeding the hungry at uh, Central Center Park or City Center Park uh, in Greensboro, uh, someone came up with this card, uh, a beautiful card. It says, with thanks. I just want to read it to you. It says, uh, dear folks, I've seen you at the park several times now, and I just wanted to tell you how much your hard work has been appreciated. So many people have been blessed and comforted because of you. Thank you for taking your time to help others. We will never forget you. Peace and love, Juanita. Isn't that good? And it's because of, of what you're doing, supporting the ministry and volunteers to say, you know what, I'm going to take time out of my day and I'm going to stand in a park that's sometimes hot and I'm going to give out articles of love. I'm going to feed those who stand in need of a meal. So I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for all that you're doing for Ebenezer. Well, I am, I'm thinking about the word as we're going to talk about uh, getting closer to the Lord today. And I, I want you to get ready, even as uh, you see that picture in the background uh, of that, that father and daughter, just closeness. You know what? Our Heavenly Father wants us to get close to Him. Well, prepare your hearts. See you soon. This is actually one of my favorite um, passages in the Bible, and it's, it's stuck with me my entire life, so I want to share it with you all this morning. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food, and the, light, and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe the wildflowers in the, in the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your Heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Oh, I woke up early this morning. 
My heart was beating right on time. I said, Lord, I truly thank you for opening up these eyes of mine. Then I went over to my window, and while looking through the shade, once again I had to tell him, thank you, Lord, for letting me see another day. Now the sun was brightly shining, the wind was blowing not too strong, in a treetop just a few feet away was a robin singing a song. I don't know what he was singing, pretty soon he was on his way, who's to say he wasn't being grateful and saying thank you for another day. Everybody ought to praise his name, be thankful and praise his name. Everybody ought to praise his name. Cause if Robin could say thank you, you can do it too. Come on and praise his name. He woke you up this morning. He put food on your table. Praise yeah, yeah, cause if Robin could say thank you, let me say that again. Now the sun was brightly shining, the wind was blowing not too strong, and in a treetop just a few feet away was a Robin singing a song. Now I don't know what he was singing. And pretty soon he was on his way. Who's to say he wasn't being grateful and saying thank you for another day? Everybody ought to praise his name. He's been good to us, y'all. Praise his name. He got us through COVID. Praise his name. Yeah, yeah, cause if a Robin could say thank you, come on and praise his name. Come on and He woke us up this morning Yeah, yeah Cause if a Robin could say thank you You can do it too Are you excited about Jesus? I know I am As we've been in this series Just a Closer Walk with Thee um, It has been my prayer That we all have been uh, growing closer to Him um, That we have all been uh, really uh, grabbing hold of him as we, we, we understand how blessed we really are. Uh, remember that hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Uh, granted, Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this day that you have made. I thank you that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, thank you for salvation. Lord, we were conceived in iniquity, and I am so grateful that you I had a plan to deliver us by your son, Jesus. Lord, thank you for his death, his burial, but thank you mostly for his resurrection. Now, Father, I just pray for those who are listening in that may not know you. Would you help today be their day, that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead. You said they would be saved. Let them experience your immense grace and mercy. Now, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Therefore, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. You're our teacher. You're our guide. Would you lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain, so easy to be understood, that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. On the chat, can you just put amen? Yeah, amen. Uh, affirming uh, that we are ready. We're ready to receive the word of God together. As we've been going through this series, uh, we, we made our way to the uh, New Testament, and, and the Lord kind of just uh, touched my heart to go back to some Psalms and pick up. Uh, we did a Psalm Sunday before last, and today I want you to focus in with me on Psalms 84. Psalm 84. And I want you to look at that fourth verse. Psalm 84 and 4. It reads, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Isn't that good? Blessed are those who dwell in your house. 
they will still be praising you. I want to speak from a title today, Stay Close to the Lord. Stay Close to the Lord. As we enter into uh, this portion of Psalms, it, it's just an awesome background. Uh, many theologians hold that uh, during this time frame that there was a, a son of Korah and um, they weren't able or a portion of them weren't able to get to the temple. Now, now it's important to note that each Jew in that season and time was required to go to the temple or the tabernacle. That's the place where uh, God's presence would reside. And they were retired, uh, required to go three times a year uh, during Passover, uh, the Feast of uh, uh, Tabernacles, and Pentecost. So uh, fast uh, Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, these three times were very, very important. If you couldn't make it, um, really, your heart would yearn to be there, it would be problematic. Maybe you had gotten sick, but just to be there uh, where God's presence. Uh, when we go through these scriptures today, uh, this desiring to be at the tabernacle is bigger than just the building, but we're going to look at the desire to be with God, to be in God's presence. Uh, the title, again, uh, it says for the music leader, a psalm for the people or the sons of Kor. Let's jump into Psalms 84 and 1. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Here's our, our, our first point. True desire for God. True desire for God. The psalmist here, we, we, we really sense his heart that he desires the Lord. He has a passion for the Lord. And, and saints, I, I really want you to look at your life and see what well, where is that passion at? I, I'm not talking about just connecting on Sunday or even Bible studies, but a passion for God that takes you over from uh, the general fellowship unto a personal relationship with the Lord. Uh, the, the other Sunday, we, we were desiring God's presence in our in-person service. And I, I forget exactly which service it was. I think it was the 1045 in-person and, and Ashton was singing, uh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. And he was just singing, going through it, a cappella. And, and, and in the midst of the song, about midway, God's presence, he's always with us, but it, it seemed to kind of just roll over and, and the congregation was singing together and we were all on the same page, Ashton uh, leading us. And then after Ashton finished it, uh, Minister Brown got happy and he started singing and, and took us through another round because it began to touch the hearts of the members. It began to touch the hearts of the visitors. That's what the desiring God can do for us that we can experience his his presence and and sometimes it sneaks up on us are there any amens out it sneaks up on us because God's presence can be so strong Jeremiah 29 12 talks of this it says then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you Jeremiah 29 13 and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart this is important I, I want you to get this thought I want to emphasize this thought. It says there should be a desire to be in the presence of God. Yes, there should be a desire to be in God's presence. So, so important. If it is not there, I would ask you today to check yourself. And there's going to be some times that it's going to seem that God is so far away, but you've got to stay in the scriptures. You've got to stay in prayer. You've got to continue to seek his face. Jesus reminds us in Matthew 22, 37, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart with all your soul and with all your mind. Are we there as people of God, really loving him with everything that we have within us? I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. Look at Psalms 84, 3. As, as these sons of Kor at, are, are thinking and processing, just wanting to be in the presence of the Lord. It says, even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will 
still be praising you. Now, it's interesting at the end of that uh, 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 a scripture, you see it says Salah. Th this Salah, um, theologians are actually a little confused on what it could be. Some have come out and said it's a kind of a meditative point. It's, 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 it's when the psalmist is putting emphasis on a particular scripture or portion of scripture, and he wants to the, us to think about it. Um, now these these are the things that make us kind of ponder in our hearts. I, you remember Arsenio Hall, he would have those those moments that he would talk, I just aged myself today, but some of you know what I'm talking about. But we need to meditate and process this. Uh, the, the point that I want you to get out of this is staying connected produces blessings. And that's a good one, isn't it? Staying connected produces blessings. Anybody want to walk in the blessings of the Lord? Just say amen wherever you're sitting at. Just say yes. I, I want blessings in my life. Uh, there are actually were two altars in the tabernacle. When, when the people would gather around, the high priests and others would be closer. There were two uh, tabernacles, in the, there are two altars in the tabernacle. Very important. Uh, one was the brazen and the other was the gold altar. I want to say that again, uh, two altars in the tabernacle, one was the brazen and one was the gold. Uh, the, the brazen actually stood for uh, this, this, this typifying Christ's death. So as we look at it and we compare it to the New Testament, it was it was typifying Christ's death. But uh, the goal when actually was talking about his resurrection, his power. And when you put all together, we see that it, it all represents the finished work of Christ. Yes, right there in the tabernacle of the Old Testament, we could see and understand uh, what the Messiah was going to do for us. And thank God he's already done it for us. Warren Wiersbe, he writes this. He said, perhaps the priests and the Levites took for granted their privilege of dwelling in the courts of the Lord, but the psalmist did not. God's altars were to him what a nest was to a bird, a place of safety and satisfaction. Isn't that good? Uh, we, we, we need to think about our lives and know that there's no, uh, there's no better place to be but in the presence of God. That's where safety, that's where peace and joy have we taken God's presence for granted even with our lives, that we have been saved, delivered, and set free. Notice Psalms 84 and 4. It says, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. They're blessings in, in dwelling with God, staying in God's presence. I, I'm not talking about a one hit and move on, but I'm talking about a daily walking with him, just a closer walk with him, that there's blessings in staying close to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and recognizing the the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 16 and 11 brings it out like this. It says, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. Can you say joy, joy uh, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I'm telling you, man, stay close to the Lord. Look at Psalms 84 and 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Here's another point, pilgrimage, the pilgrimage. Now, um, this is important because I, I, I want to define this. Uh, uh, pilgrimage is a, a journey for a pilgrim. Uh, we can take it to a, a another level, one who travels to a holy place. So a pilgrim who is traveling to a holy place. And, and I want to uh, bring this out that as saints, as we're drawing closer to the Lord, did you realize that we're pilgrims? Yes, every day we're, we're traveling. We're traveling to the presence of God. Uh, it's not just necessarily that that you may be in an in-person service and you are a pilgrim coming to Ebenezer Baptist Church. Please, please, uh, that, that, that's a semblance of that. But as Christians, those who are saved and delivered and set free, we actually have God's presence dwelling in us. And so as we draw closer to him, we're pilgrims. We're, we're journeying to that holy place. And in essence, God wants us to be holy as he is holy. First Peter, uh, actually Peter begins to talk about this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this calling this pilgrimage uh first peter 2 and 9 but you are a chosen generation there ought to be some could you put in the chat chosen i am chosen a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people i want to read that first part again for you but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people if we're special then we want to be near our lord and savior the father god that you may proclaim the 
praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Can you put in the chat mercy? First Peter 2 and 11, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, there it is, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. This is so important as we're drawing close to the holiness of God, who God is. We want to be in his presence. Notice Psalms 84, 5 and again, bless it. Can you put that? I, I'm telling you, I'm going to work it. Bless it. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrims. I'm, I'm telling you, I see so many people who are weak. I see so many saints that should be strong, that find themselves in places that are far away from God. We've got to fight to be in the presence of the Lord. We, we've got to deal with the distractions and fears that are coming uh, against us, our, our social media, the news. That's, that's bombarding our minds, all of these things to get us out of the presence of God. But I'm telling you, God has done too much for us. He has been too good. I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. Look at Psalms 84 and 6. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Now, I, I, I need you to grasp this. This is a picture. This is uh, the, the psalmist is thinking about that, how they made that pilgrimage to the tabernacle of God. And, and so we're on a journey. We're walking with them. Can you, can you sense the marching towards the holiness of God, that tabernacle? Psalms 84 and 6 again, as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. I, I need you to get that. Each one appears before God in Zion. Here's the point. Weeping to joy. Yes. Weeping to joy. As we break down this in that sixth verse, very important, it said the Valley of Baca. Most uh, theologians, they hold that uh, historically this was a, a shrub that would actually grow within that valley. But what made this, this shrub of this plant uh, very important is that this was an arid uh, area. This was a place without much rain. It was uh, almost desert-like in a sense. But but somehow uh, this plant would be able to grow. It would begin be able to flourish even in these bad conditions. Uh, th th this is important because I want to make some comparisons here again, Psalms 84, 6, as they pass through the valley of Baca. And so that, that Baca meaning weeping or barren place, notice what happens. They make it a spring. There ought to be some shouts of praise wherever you are. The rain also covers it with pool. See, see when we when we focus on the Lord, no matter what we're going through, maybe it is a place of weeping. Maybe it is a place of baka. Can you put baka in the chat? You might be going through it right now, but I'm telling you God can turn your weeping to joy. He can turn your sadness to to happiness. He he can turn it around whatever you're going through, and sometimes God allows us to go through these situations so that we can know that he is God and God alone. Let me show you Psalms 20 3 5 says you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies you anoint my head with all my cup runs over psalms 23 6 surely somebody say surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever i'm talking about weeping to joy uh, john wrote this one of my uh, favorite verses in the bible john 1 and 4 it says in these things i write to you that your joy may be full this is so important. He wants us to have full joy. He wants to take us from weeping to joy. Notice Psalms 84, 7. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Now, now this is important. Uh, as they're getting closer to the tabernacle, or even the process of the thump, instead of getting uh, more tired, uh, they're actually getting stronger. You're going to get that. You're going to get that. See, see, the closer we get to God's presence, even though it's a lengthy trip, uh, the closer we get to being with him, the stronger we get. Uh, some of you have experienced that. I, I remember in Australia and we, we flew back. We were in that plane for hours upon hours upon hours. I was so weary. But the closer I got to home, uh, the closer I got to my house and my bed, the stronger I got because I was excited. I pushed through at the end just to get back to my room. My 
residence again. And it's the same way as we're growing in the Lord. I'm telling you, you got to push through and, and we go from strength to strength. Isaiah explained it in 40 and 31. He said, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Anybody need a renewal of strength? They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. I, I, the, the, the other uh, couple of weeks ago, I actually went to uh, visit one of my friends that lives in uh, uh, Georgia, and, and, and I, he's on this health kick, and, and he's, he does something uh, which is amazing. I'm going to describe it. It's called HITS. It, it, it's HITS. It's called High Intensity Interval Training. Now, now I, I learned about this. He cross-trains with this. Uh, basically, what they do is uh, they tell you to go all out for like 30 seconds or a minute, and then you have like a minute or two to recover. And you go through this over and over again. And the science behind this is the more pressure we put on our bodies in a shorter amount of time, we can make more progress when it comes to our, our, our cardiovascular and being able to be uh, stronger within our bodies in a shorter amount of time than just kind of uh, pressing it out and pulling it out and not putting intensity in it. And I began to think about hits. And I, I started to think about maybe God is allowing hits to come in my life. Some of you going to catch. I'm talking about high intensity uh, intervals, uh, training intervals in our lives because sometimes we go through some issues and struggles where we don't think we're going to make it to the next day. A weeping may endure for a night, but aren't you glad that joy comes in the morning? I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. Has there been some times in your life that you thought that you were going to lose your mind, but but God came in in the nick of time, and, and what the devil meant for your harm, God turned it for good. He allowed you to go through a, a valley of baka. He allowed you to go through a valley of weeping, but on the other side, if you had not gone through what you went through, you wouldn't have the joy that you're experiencing now. There ought to be some shouts of praise. When you look back over your life and you see that all that the Lord has done for you, I tell you, there should be something that turns like a wheel in the middle of a wheel, knowing that being close to God produces blessings in our lives. Now, that, that that's important as, as we think about the Psalms, as he continues on, the Psalms 84 and 8, he says, O Lord of God, uh, of hosts, hear my prayer, give ear, O God of Jacob. And then he says, O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. Here's another point. I hope you get this one. Powerful prayer. Yes, yes. Powerful prayer. Now, this, this is key and critical. Oftentimes, uh, we, we have a mindset of what powerful prayer is. Maybe uh, you were been in church and, and you heard a deacon pray. And you're like, that's a powerful prayer. Maybe, maybe there was a, a preacher that, that you heard or a pastor and you said that was a powerful prayer. I remember in the uh, church that I used to attend many, many years ago, uh, there would be a time that a minister would be asked to pray. And uh, this was a time that you were supposed to pray your most powerful prayer. And I, I'm telling you, there's some good prayers that were were, were lifted up to the Lord. But I, I'm telling you, it's bigger than that. The psalmist shows us what a powerful prayer is all about. Uh, he begins to uh, break down in this impassioned prayer. See, when you've gone through some stuff and, and when you're getting closer to the Lord, you learn how to pray because you know how to cry out to him. I'm telling you, some of our, our, our best prayers have been out of anguish and, and out of our situation and out of our struggles. When we knew we couldn't do anything, we threw up our hands in the air and we called on a powerful God with a powerful prayer. Are there any witnesses out there? It, it addressed here uh, the, the Lord God of hosts. Notice he says the, the Lord God of hosts. He's saying uh, the one that surrounds us, the, the one that leads us, the one that's a part of us. But, but at the next breath, he said, I, I want to call you the God of Jacob. See, Jacob is broken down. It means the, the deceiver or cheat. What, what he's saying, God, you, you, you're the Lord of hosts and, and you're the God of the universe, but I'm so glad you're the God of the sinner. You, you're the God of the broken. You're the God of the weeping. You're the God of those that are going through. You're the God of those that are just trying to make it from day to day. There ought to be some shouts. Can you say amen out there? When we think about how God loves us so much, stay close to the Lord. In context, he also uh, lists this up to the king. Like, let, let me show you that the CV version really translates this in, in a wonderful way. Psalms 84, 9. It says, you are the shield that protects 
protects your people. Anybody know that? And I am your chosen one. Won't you smile on me? Aren't you glad that, that, that God smiles on us? Kurt Franklin, I believe he said, he says, just smile. Aren't you glad that God's grace and mercy smiles on us? Paul writes of a powerful prayer. Listen to this, 1 Timothy 2.1. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. So many people are struggling with their prayer life. But I'm telling you, if you begin to write some stuff down and you begin to write people's down and, and people's names down and you, you begin to put your president's name down and the vice president, you got something to pray for our Congress and our sin and our judicial system. It says for kings and all who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. I'm talking about powerful prayer. Stay close to the Lord. First uh, Timothy 2 and 3 said, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Are you praying like this? Are you seeking the Lord on a daily basis, putting these things in your prayer time, saying, God, I need you to move on our Congress and our Senate and our judicial uh, legislature. Uh, there's been a lot of change that's been in our society, and I believe it's because the powerful prayers of the saints. God wants us to pray more for those that are in leadership. Look at Psalms 84 and 10. Stay close to the Lord. The psalmist says, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Here's the point. Please get this one. Spend more time with him. Yes. Spend more time with him. I, I, I want to ask you a question again. Is it your desire uh, for the Lord uh, to, to, to be in his presence this intense that, that, that you say, you know what, when, when I began to prioritize my life, nothing is above God. Nothing is above prayer. Nothing is above reading scriptures. I, I don't care about the most exciting things that, that's ever happened to me. When I think about who God is and how he saved me and, and delivered me, I want him to be top priority in my life. One of the popular worship songs, it describes this design. It says, in your presence, in your presence, there is peace. In your presence, in your presence, there is joy. I will linger. I will stay in your presence day by day till your likeness may be seen in me. Maybe that's why we're not seeing as much holiness as, as God desires because we're not staying in his presence. But I'm a witness. If you can get into God's presence, you will be changed. You will be transformed for the inside out and you'll begin to look more and more like Christ. I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. The Lord put this thought on my mind. My heart. I, I want you to get this one. Uh, many do a lot of talking about God, but few spend a lot of time with God. You, you got that? I want to. I want to read that again to you. Uh, many do a lot of talking about God, but few spend a lot of time with God. But we got to decide that we're going to stop just talking about Him. Uh, we, we do a lot of talking at at church service. We we do a lot of talking at certain times, but but do, do we spend time with the God that we talk? about? Are, are we willing to, to sacrifice it all to be in his presence? I'm talking about to stay close to the Lord. I look at this, these final verses as we pull this together. Psalms 84 and 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. There ought to be some shouts with that one. Psalms 84, 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Notice that's an exclamation mark. The psalmist then got excited. I done got excited with the psalmist thinking about this whole process of staying close to the Lord. Here's our final point. Walking in grace and glory. Yes, yes. Walking in grace and glory. Now we talk a lot about grace grace and glory. I just want to uh, break something down for you. Grace is unmerited favor. That means God gives me uh, blessings that I, 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 I don't I don't even deserve. He, he, he gives me unmerited favor. I'm telling you that there's something about favor in the saints. Like uh, somebody even uh, pegged this saying. It said favor is not fair. Could you put that in chat? A quick, a quick type. Can you say favor is not fair? No, it is not fair when we think about what God has done for us. But notice glory in this means shining. 
it. It means that when we get into the presence of God, the darkness is pushed back because in God, there is no darkness at all. So the closer we get to the Lord, the, the more sight we have, the, the blindness goes away. Uh, King David captures this thought in Psalms 119, 105. He said, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Are there any shouts of praise out there? Aren't you glad the closer that you get to the Lord, the more wisdom you have and, and the more understanding that you can walk in, uh, the, the, the more words of encouragement you can give other people around. Instead of being someone that brings people down, you can be one that lights their fire. I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. Does anybody want to walk in the grace and glory of God? That is not a rhetorical question. You need to answer right now because if you want to walk in God's grace and his glory, you got to get closer to the Lord. And then we can uh, come to the point of saying, God, I need you every hour. I need you in my mind. I need you in my heart. I need you in my home. I need you when I'm in my car. I need you when I'm on my job. I need you wherever you are. That is why Christ came to dwell amongst men, walking and healing the sick and delivering them. You, you remember one time as he's making his way to Calvary, there was an important point that he brings out the closeness. He, he wants us to be as close as possible. John 13, 1, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. They ought to be somebody say, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. Stay close to the Lord. John 13, 2, and supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garment, took a towel and girded himself. John 13, 5, after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. I'm telling you, as I think about that, he humbles himself. We're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he washes the disciples' feet, the dirty feet, the messed up feet, those who had gone astray, and to wipe them with a towel which he was girded with. I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. John 13, 6, then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Peter didn't understand this. He said, you're getting a little too close. It, it, it was great to see you uh, multiply the bread and the fish. It, it was great to walk with you on the water for a period of time. It was great to see the blind eyes open and it was great to see the lame but, but now you want to touch us and, and you're trying to do a servant's role. No, you're our king and you are my messiah uh, but notice John 13 7 Jesus answered and said to him what I'm doing you do not understand now but you will know after this I'm talking about you wanted us to stay close to the Lord. Peter said to him you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. What Christ was saying, you got to get close to me. You can no longer stay afar from me, but I need to touch you and you need to touch me. I'm talking about stay close to the Lord. But notice John 13, 9, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. But aren't you glad he didn't stop right there? He secured it for us on the cross of Calvary. He secured it by carrying our sins and bearing our griefs. He dies on the cross of Calvary. They put him in a cold grave. But three days later, he gets up with all power and glory. And now he's ascended to the right hand of the Father. And he's praying for us that we can stay close to him. Saints, I encourage you as you're going through your day and week, I want you to begin to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. Just thinking about that should call something to stir on the inside of you. When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul should shout out hallelujah. But that hallelujah should take you into a desire, a passion to be in the presence of God. I encourage you to pray more. I, I encourage you to read the word more. I encourage you to worship more, to lift up those hands and give God the highest praise for he is worthy of all the praise. Stay close to the Lord. Saints, God desires us to be in his presence. Man, as I was going through this scripture, I am telling you, he wants us close to him. But so many times we go the opposite direction. We, we try to do it in our, our own power instead of 
growing close to him, going strength to strength. That's where the joy comes from, being in God's presence. That's where the peace comes from, dwelling with him. Saints, I want you to literally look at your prayer life. Would you equate it to be powerful prayer or just kind of a dispassionate prayer? We've got to come to the point of realizing the scriptures are clear. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. And it goes on to say the fervent or fiery prayers. How do we get there? We get there by getting into God's presence, reading his word and realizing how blessed we are. Man, there are so many people that are going through in this season, so many lost souls. We need to pray for more souls to be saved and brought to the knowledge of the truth. And please understand, it's not just happening in the physical building. We need to be, be willing to be used of God on our jobs, in the grocery stores, at the parks. We need to say, Lord, use me for your glory. As we stay close to him, oh, his presence will be all on us and others will sense the glory and the grace, the shining of God in our lives. If you don't know Christ today, I pray that today God has pulled back the blinders. You can confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead. He said, you will be saved. Saved means that you're close to God. And God said, I'm going to draw you even closer. That now you can see my plan for your life. For the saints who are saved, I pray today that you break through those distractions, push those fears back, and you go, you know what? I, I, I need a closer walk with him. And you just don't talk about it, but you do it. You read more, you pray more, you worship more, you praise more. And say, God, here I am. Use me. Use me, Lord. Use me. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this word today. Oh God, that we stay close to you. Lord, thank you for the psalmist. But most importantly, thank you for your spirit. Oh God, that we apply this to our lives. That we not just be hearers of the word. But Lord, we be doers of the word. Lord, thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your son Christ. Thank you, Lord, for using us in this season. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, you know my soul cries out, hallelujah. Oh